Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control. Hope everyone's doing all right tonight. I uh, got here, I'm here, we're here, all together. And first, I already have a question. I want to go ahead and start the, the stream off tonight with one that I got on YouTube, oh, not YouTube, but Facebook. And I want to go ahead and approach that first. So let's go ahead and get on with the scene. And hello, Brandon, nice to see you from Illinois. So let's go to my screen here. Oh, you know what? I don't have my call on. Let me see if I can get that thing running real quick. So if anybody wants to call in, they can. I think. Okay. So I want to go over a question that someone had. This came in through my Facebook page. And I thought it would be easier to just go over it in front of everybody on stream tonight. And I promised I would. So, they said, Hi, I recently found and was treated for bed bugs in my home. And I have so many questions. My first being, if we found a few adult bed bugs, but never a nest, was the infestation just that small or was it missed? So this is one thing that a lot of people don't understand. I want to answer that part first. And hello, Molly. Um, is that bed bugs don't nest like you would think of as a nest. So they don't like nurture and take care of one another. Um, like, you know, ants, they nest. They actually take care of one another. They're soldiers, workers, foragers, stuff that always work together to, to achieve a common goal. Uh, bed bugs are pretty much fend for themselves. Yes, they will kind of huddle together and cuddle together sometimes, but for the most part, they will spread out. The males will actually kill the females if they try to make more than once or twice. Uh, you know, So they do kind of spread out and get away from each other. So they don't actually nest. So you can't technically find a nest of bed bugs. Now, you can find where bed bugs are nesting, like one or two, maybe you know, huddled up underneath a... Uh, a seam of a mattress or you know down behind a baseboard or something like that but that's um so it's a, they're not that easy to find especially in a very minor infestation a lot of times they're kind of spread out and you don't always find them all um they said i always also i also haven't found many dead bed bugs and no live ones for about a week so i'm really nervous that they weren't handled Given that it's a pandemic, we haven't been anywhere. So let's talk about um, whether or not you will see a lot of live bed bugs after a treatment from an exterminator. Now, I don't know what this exterminator that came in and did. It wasn't me. I don't know who did this job. I don't know what chemicals they used. I don't know a whole lot about the specific situation of the pesticides used. But I know that a lot of exterminators are using older chemicals and later, actually, I did talk with this certain individual, and later they did actually mention to me that uh, the exterminator had used temperate, which um, most bed bugs have developed an extremely strong uh, resistance to, and it just doesn't work as well for bed bugs. It doesn't mean it doesn't work, it just doesn't work as well as some other pesticides that are on the market uh, Crossfire, Alpine, and different things that are available to the public. Um, or available to the general, you know, exterminating community and the public, uh, that, you know, temperate is just not a very good chemical. And you won't notice a lot of dead bed bugs with temperate either. So um, that might be part of her problem. It says here that uh, they haven't been anywhere. Now, this is a really common thing right now. So I get all of the bed bug jobs I've done within the last five to ten months um no one's been anywhere no one's really gone anywhere to get any actual bed bug infestation so um where could you have got them where did they come from so um since one of the one of the ways that people can get bed bugs right now uh schools so in a lot of areas especially here like in bedford county and campbell county and uh, Roanoke County, all the schools are going, they're, they're in session. Children are going, they're going on like split schedules. Some are going two days a week, some are going three days a week, but the children are going to school. And schools are a good way to pick up bed bugs, especially when they're coming home from the bus. 
So this is one way that you can get bed bugs. But let's assume this person does not have children. How would they get bed bugs? So um, it says here that they boarded their dog for a few days over the holidays. And they would find a bed, uh, adult bed bugs three and a half to four weeks after bringing them home on a dog bed or a blanket. Otherwise, we have no idea how we pick them up. So, oh, would we find, so this is a question, would we find adult bed bugs uh, three, to half, three and a half to four weeks after bringing them home, talking about dogs on a bed, on a dog blanket? So, bed bugs will live on animal bedding. It's not very likely. It does happen, and I've seen it in 23 years. I've only seen it a handful of times where the bed bugs have actually lived on pet bedding. They will live on it, but typically it has to do with the blood meal. So bed bugs are attracted to human beings, and humans run at a different uh, body temperature, and they also uh, produce a different level of CO2 that actually attracts bed bugs. So they know the difference between a dog and a person, and typically the only reason they will feed on an other animal like a dog or a cat or something like that is because they're just more convenient, easier to get to, and maybe it's near a place that you sat down your luggage, maybe the dog sleeps in a place like that. So this is something that you can take into account. Usually dogs and cats do not bring bed bugs in with them. They don't ride on them like fleas do. They can't really hold on when a dog walks through a room. They, uh, they will shake them loose and they just will not carry very well on an animal. So understand that, that you know, dogs and cats usually do not bring bed bugs in with them. Uh, it's very, very rare, in fact, near impossible for an animal like that to bring bed bugs into the house. Um, otherwise, we have no idea how we pick them up. And so, like I said, there are places that you can get bed bugs. You can bring them in from uh, uh, delivery. So I'm going to touch on this. I've touched on this in a couple of videos I did a long time ago, maybe two, three years ago, um, where I used to have a customer. So this has been maybe back when Amazon first started as a book company. Um, they... They started selling things like car chargers, cell phone chargers, um, you know, USB cables, uh, you know, things that people get all the time. They just order, they happen to order lots of, and usually people order three, four, five um, different, uh, you know, quick little easy things, and you want to be able to get it, you know, within a day or two. And so what Amazon would do is they would hire people to be their, um, their marketplace out you know, so so I the, the house that I serviced was at Smith Mountain Lake, Virginia, um, which is like 30 minutes from my house. So you can get ordered stuff quick and easy within a day or two because it's it's shipping locally. So um, if you order like a phone charger and it's shipping from a house that's in your neighborhood, then you can very well uh, bring in bed bugs from the boxes from Amazon and other shipping. If you are getting your delivery through Instacart or, uh, you know, home delivery type systems like groceries and stuff like that, you can get them from people's trunks of their car because they're not just using the car for, say, Instacart and different places like that. They're actually using the car to travel around and do their own business as well. And so you can pick up bed bugs from people's car. Um, this is a really common way to get bed bugs. So I just wanted to address this question. I have one other question I'm going to get to. And then I, I actually, let me go ahead and answer a couple of questions that came in. And then I have another question that actually came in uh, through my Facebook page. So I try to get to people's questions the best I can on these live streams like this. But um, so let's see. We've got a question from uh, BOH, which I, I'm reckoning that's Ohio. Uh, Hi, how do I treat my carpet? Now, I noticed when I was reading earlier, they had asked about treating their carpet for bed bugs. You don't treat your carpet for bed bugs. You only treat your carpet for fleas. Um, bed bugs don't live in your carpet. A lot of people believe that bed bugs live in the carpet, but they don't. They actually live in the area that the, that the carpet uh, connects with the baseboard where the tack strips. I have found bed bugs nesting down 
under, and there I am talking about nesting. I have found bed bugs clustering underneath the uh, tack strips. I have found them where the baseboard attaches to the wall, where the carpet fits under the baseboard. I found them there. They're never out in the open. They won't live in the open. Uh, they don't like um, vibration. They don't like the, when people move through the room. They don't like the constant movement of people traveling back and forth through the room. And so they're going to gravitate towards the edges of the room near the baseboards. So when you do a treatment for bed bugs, you go through and you treat mattresses, box springs, headboard, footboard, bed rails. You treat the baseboards throughout the, uh, the perimeter, you know, around the room, uh, perimeter in the closet. You know, you treat like around the, any cracks and crevices you can find that you think bed bugs will live in. That's where you treat. Um, and Brandon says, do you mix Gentrol in with the Crossfire for bed bug treatments? No, Gentrol doesn't work for bed bugs. Um, and then Molly says, treat bed and baseboards too. Yes, correct. You do. Molly knows. Molly knows a drill. She comes here all the time. She's always here. So, anyway. Um, so the next question came in. Oh, uh, that's not the one. That's the one. Hey, Jason. I've been watching your videos on YouTube. Are you able to help me even though I live in Toronto, Canada? Or help me find where to source the right products? Thank you. I've been trying for years with no success. So they've been fighting bed bugs for years with no success. And so I want to show, let's see if I can get this thing to pop up over here. So a lot of people ask me this question. I get this question a lot, especially people from Canada and people from New York. And so, in fact, just last week I had somebody on stream from New York. And so I want to go over this. I'm going to share this uh, video capture. Uh, video capture? No, not video capture. Screen capture. So here's an incognito window. Let's go to Amazon. All right, shop slash Green Acres Pest Control. And I'm going to paste that in the chat for anyone that's watching live. So you can go here with me if you want. And so if you go to my, green, it's a green, it's a shop on Amazon. Um, and so anyway, if you scroll down, actually it's the very first thing on the list for me. I don't know what it would be for anybody else here. But if you go to Bedbug New York, Canada. So I changed the name. Because before, it wasn't all showing up. And so people were kind of confused as to how to find this information. So one of the problem is that, that when you go, when you treat bed bugs, all right, the chemicals that I recommend. So if you scroll down and you get to bed bug supplies down here. All right, if you click there, I recommend Crossfire. Now, this is a gallon. You don't need that. And you, this is the 13 ounces down here. This is usually what I recommend, uh, which is, you know, you could get it on Amazon. It's forty three sixty six right now, but that cha that price does fluctuate. You may be able to get it cheaper. Oh, here we go. If you click over here, you can find it for, well, it still says forty three sixty six. This one's $38.00. Um, but you can't get it on Amazon Prime. This is thirty-eight ninety. Um, so there's different ones, but this is the Prime deal here, and that's why I usually recommend Prime deals because I'm a member of Prime. But um, but anyway, this is what I recommend for the for the treatment of bed bugs. But if you live in New York and Canada, you can't get Crossfire. You can't buy it unless you know somebody. Unless you know somebody who lives in New York, not New York, but outside of the, city, the the state of New York, like New Jersey or maybe Maryland or somewhere like that, they can get it for you <laughs> and send it to you. You can't get it. But there is a, um, so this is called Harris 5-Minute Bed Bug Killer. Now, this is not the same as other Harris products. So if you go to Harris, um, if you search just Harris bed bug, this is the common thing people find. This is garbage. This is absolute hot garbage, trash, doesn't work, awful, don't buy it, don't waste your money. It's not worth the money. It does not work. Bed bugs are immune to it. It does not work. But this one here is the five minute. Now it says Ace Hardware sells it too. So you can find it other locations. I didn't actually know that Ace Hardware sold it until just now. This is news for me. Uh, this black one here, that doesn't work. 
That's a Harris product. And it says it's for bed bugs and it's bed bug killer, but it doesn't work. It's not the same chemical. This right here. So, so let's go to Ace Hardware and see if they've got a good picture. See, it's actually Crossfire. See? Colothidin, Metafluthrin, Pyromobutoxide. Those are the active ingredients in Crossfire. If you go and you read the Crossfire label, it's the same exact thing. The only problem with this product is that it comes pre-mixed, which might be a reason why you can get it in Canada and New York. Um, because it already comes mixed for you, so you don't have you don't you don't have access to the actual concentrate. And there are some people in Canada that tell me that they can't actually get this specific bed bug spray um, because it's Crossfire, because it's a neonicotinoid. You can't actually get it in Canada, but I've had some people tell me they can, especially because this specific person talked about being in Toronto. I have had people contact me out of Toronto, Canada, said they could get this in, Tor in Toronto. But if you cannot get this in Toronto, then I've got this other product that I have listed called Temperate. Now, I went over Temperate earlier, and I talked about how Temperate is... Um, most bed bugs are immune to Temperate. Now, this is in the States. May not be the same in Canada. You know, we do live in two different geographical locations. It is a possibility that they're not immune to temperate in Canada, but that's why I have it listed as an alternative to Crossfire. The problem with temperate is it has to be used uh, every two weeks. And the active ingredient in temperate is imidacloprid. Now, imidacloprid, ha bed bugs have been shown to develop immunity to imidacloprid. So. It's not necessarily one of the number, the best things that, that I could recommend, but when you live in Canada, it's kind of, it's very sparse, your, your choices, you know, unless you're going to go with an actual exterminator who may be licensed to get something like, uh, you know, Crossfire. This is what I have found. This is the research I've done myself, and there may be better, you know, better sources out there for Canadians to be able to find out. I have written these two books. I recommend The Troublesome Pest Solutions because it has bed bugs, cockroaches, and fleas. I do run promotions on this every now and then, so you can get it for a dollar. Um, and I've got these little heat. Now, I, you know me. If you've watched my channel, I do not agree that uh, in heat treatments. I don't think heat treatments are successful. I don't think they're a very good way to, to treat your house. As far as bed bugs, I just don't think that they're very effective. But the reason I have these listed is because you can take your items. So if you've got books, if you've got maybe some electronics, some things that won't be damaged by heat, and you can put them in these little boxes, they can heat them specifically, and you can kill bed bugs and stuff like shoes uh, and, and clothes. If you have hanging clothes, like maybe you've got... Uh, maybe you've got an expensive wedding gown and you want to pass it down to your daughter or, you know, and you don't want it to get ruined by bed bugs, then you can take it and hang it up in one of these and heat treat it and kill the bed bugs in it because some dry cleaners won't even take clothes if they've got bed bugs in them. So it's just another alternative. And this is all I've got so far. I'm, I'm working really diligently, very, very, you know, I'm always constantly trying to find solutions for our Canadian neighbors and for New Yorkers, and they're talking about eliminating neonics, maybe even out in California, and so I'm always on the hunt to try to figure out ways to eliminate bed bugs for, you know, everyone, not just, you know, in my own business. So hopefully this will help you. Hopefully this will answer your question to the best that I can. I'm sorry I can't do any better than this, but this is the best I can with the knowledge that I have about Canada. I mean, I do live in the United States. I live in Virginia. I don't even have a lot of information across the entire United States, you know, but Virginia, I'm pretty, pretty versed. Um, I get a lot of questions about things like termites and stuff like that. We only have Eastern subterranean termites here, so it's hard for me to answer any other questions. So hopefully that will answer the, the Canadian question. But I just wanted to get that done and over before we actually really get into the live stream tonight. Hope everybody's having a good night tonight. Um, so, Dwayne Williams says, what are three different chemicals that I can mix to treat for bed bugs? Okay, so you can use other pesticides for bed bugs. So let's see if, uh, let's actually go back over here um, to, let's see. 
I don't know if the label allows for it. This is the problem, is labels change all the time, and I want to make sure I'm giving you valid um, advice. So let's see here. Let me do, while I'm, well, actually, while I look this up, let me answer another question someone else is asking too. Um, James said, we recently got my PC shop I work at to order Crossfire for the first time. Excited to try it out. Oh, Pest Control. Okay, so you recently got your Pest Control shop I work for to order Crossfire for the first time. Excited to try it out. Bed bugs have actually been slow lately where I am. At for some reason. Dead bugs pretty bad here. I did one of the worst ones ever the other day. Um, but they do. They, they Bed bugs are like a seasonal thing. So you'll get called in uh, every now and then. Let me see if I can find this thing. I want to find this chemical, but I want to find the actual um, label. Sorry, I always work on the fly. So there's the label. So let's share my screen. This is Zenprox. So Zenprox is intended for use by pest management professionals. Now you may not actually be able to get this. I'm not sure if you can get this or not. But the active ingredient, one of them, is pyronyl butoxide, which is what is in Crossfire. But I don't think it's actually for bed bugs. Let's find out. It says it provides effective uh, kill of fleas, cockroaches, other listed pests, and can be applied into a broadcast spot or crack and crevice treatment in homes, apartment buildings, hotels. So I don't think bed bugs are actually listed. But that's why I wanted to find out. So this is actually an additive to help with cockroaches, which I already knew that that's what it was for. But so far, they do not have bed bugs on the label. So I will have to look into other things you can add to your pesticides to actually make them work to kill bed bugs. I don't think you can. Nope. Oh, that sucks. Let's see if, yeah, it's all EC. That's what I thought, Zenprox EC. So, but this is what I had the question about was Gentrol. But Gentrol is actually not effective for cockroaches. Um, PCT Magazine, I think it was PCT Magazine, actually did a, uh, a really good article. It may have been PCT Magazine, but it was somebody that did an article on why, um, why Gentrol actually should not be used for bed bugs because of the amount you have to mix. It's grossly, grossly against label to try to get it to even try to kill bed bugs. Stealth Woman. Hello. Hi, I tuned in late. Just wondering, does boric acid powder kill bed bugs? Nope. Um, or like I asked you before about diatomaceous earth, what about putting baking soda on carpet to kill bed bugs? Okay. Baking soda should not be used in carpets to kill bugs. And one of the reasons is because it, it, it works really well as a deodorant. You know, you can deodorize carpets. So if you have problems with like, and this is just in my own experience, if you have problems with, say, uh, pet odors, uh, where maybe you've had a dog pee in the floor or something like that, or maybe a cat box used to be there. Um, in fact, the house, the very first house I ever was in the process of purchasing, um, it had, uh, the guy that lived there before had really, really, really bad cats. And he didn't take care of them. In fact, he was in the hospital for six months and no one took care of them. And the cats would go in and out of the house through a uh, ventilation duct in the floor. And so they had torn, it was a trailer, they had tore holes through the belly pad and were going back and forth through a ventilation duct in the floor. And it was pretty bad. The, the house was full of, of cat pee and poop all over the house. And the way I got rid of the odors was baking soda. I put baking soda all in the carpets and all everywhere and vacuumed it up and let it sit there and deodorize the trailer. It absolutely worked, worked really well. That's about the only thing baking soda is good for. Um, but Semexa, I don't recommend. Uh, so Liz Huntley says that she uh, recommends Semexa. Semexa is not bad. Diatomaceous earth is not bad. They're not horrible. They do kill bugs. But the problem is, is that I really think you should be uh, professional to use these products. 
The reason being is because they can cause uh, mud. Uh, Molly said mud daubers, and I immediately thought mud daubers. But Samexa can uh, cause lung damage, and so you do not want to breathe it in. You do not want to put it anywhere where you are going to come into contact with it and accidentally breathe it in, not thinking about it. Uh, same with diatomaceous earth. And so the problem is, is these dusts are usually put on the mattresses, around box springs, in carpets, and places where you are going to stir it up and you are going to come in contact with it. You do not want to come into contact with these dusts. They are silicates, which is a family of dusts that are actually, it's basically like ground up sand. So sand is a silicate. It's very abrasive to the lungs. And when you take, if you can imagine sand, which is what they melt to make glass, breathing it into your lungs is not healthy for you. Semexa and diatomaceous earth can cause lung damage. They can cause asthma, emphysema, irritate things like that, COPD, and it should not be used in and around your uh, bed. It does not matter if you apply it wearing a mask or gloves. It does not matter because it's dust. So I have a little bit of dust on my desk. See that? I don't know if you can see that little dust smear on my finger. You can't. But dust stirs into the air. If you've ever been in a house that's very dusty and you just walk through the house, you're, you just you walking through the house disturbing the air will disturb the dust and billow it up into the air, even in the minuscule, minuscule particles in the air. You're breathing it into your lungs. You do not want to put it out in the open. You do not want to put it on your mattresses. You do not want to put it in your carpets. You do not want to put it where you're going to vacuum it up and stir it up. You, that's, that's, this is what I'm trying to explain. You do not want to use it as a pesticide. It should not be used by anyone except a professional or someone that actually knows how to use a duster. Now, a duster, if I show you, let me show you what a duster looks like. So... Um, in fact, I have one on my page. So this is a duster. This right here. So what you do is you take one of these little bulb dusters and you fill it to this line. See this little line right here? That's your halfway mark. You fill it to the halfway mark and you shake it up really good and you use this spout. You turn it so the spout's up. So now in this part of the duster, let me see if I can get up. Let me just hide my camera for a minute. Um, there we go. So, if you see this duster right here, um, it doesn't really have an expand view, but you see how it's got this middle line. You fill up to the middle line, and from here up is air. So when you shake that duster around, you're creating a cloud in here, and you'll puff it out of the end of this. And so what you do, typically the way that you use a duster, is you will make maybe a hole in the wall, or like a very little hole, not a big hole, or... Uh, open up a outlet and you can puff it in behind the outlet. You can use this behind baseboards, but you don't want it to be, ex you don't want it exposed to open air. So the problem is when it's in the open air, that's when it's going to get stirred up by when your air conditioner cuts on, when you walk through the room, uh, when your cat or your dog jump on the bed, it's going to stir it up. You don't want this. I, I can't stress this enough why it's dangerous to use dust. And I get ragged on so hard on my dust videos. I mean, if I just go and I could show you, I'm just trying to help. But if you go to YouTube and you search Green Acres, there I am right there. Say I'm live right now. You click here or you can click over here. Subscribe right there, which I, I shameless plug. I do this every every live stream for those that watch me regularly. No, I always point to this. Let's click subscribe. Um, I'm at 12.6 thousand subs right now. I want to get up to 13. Come on, push me there. But if you go here to Green Acres Pest Control, and then you can search my channel for I've got over 200 videos. Search D E like that, and there's my D E videos. Um, so let's use this one. This has got a lot of views. This has got 139,000 views. So let's go to this video right here. All right, I don't want to play the sound. It's loud. But if you'll go down to these. So these are the comments I get on my videos. 
for those that have never read them. Yes, DE does work. This guy thinks his job might be on the line. Now, I respond. So I've responded to this. I respond to all of my comments. Some of the, I, was, I, I almost deleted this comment, because, but it didn't really, it wasn't derogatory, but, you know, I get annoyed by these. I get these all the time. Uh, they don't want you using it because it works and put them out of a job. This, this is the stuff I get. So, so never use it was necessarily the best description. Uh, more never use it without knowing how to do it correctly or effectively. See, this is, this is what I'm trying to get at is that you shouldn't use it unless you really, really know what you're doing and you've been trained to use a duster because dusters, these are not the easiest tool to use. It takes a lot of trial and error to figure out how to use a duster. So, anyway. But I get these, I get these all the time. All the time. Um, you know, it has to be food grade. Now, this is one of the biggest ones I get. It has to be food grade DE. Now, this is actually not true. So, the reason being is because in diatomaceous earth, there are two different forms of diatomaceous earth. There is a uh, crystalline, uh, amorphous, and shoot, I can't remember the words. It's been so long since I read about it. But you can never get rid of the crystalline DE ever. Ever. It's never eliminated. It's lessened, but never eliminated. And that is what causes uh, lung yeah, issues. So, anyway, now that I've harped on that and probably going to get all kinds of comments on this one when it goes live later because all of my VODs are saved, all of my live streams are saved, so you can, uh, you can always get my live streams, you know, even after I'm, I'm not streaming. You can go back and watch them. Molly, Mike, I use Revolution on my kitty. Does that work? I'd like to know a good, um, a good flea treatment for pets. Uh, I use Revolution on my kitty. I find sometimes if I'm late to reapply, shame on me, I find about five dead adult fleas near the sink. It's like they jump to get away. So hard work. No hard work. Uh, Liz Huntley says, I was told DE doesn't work. But DE is the same. So the reason I say DE because DE is the same as Semexa. They're both silicates. They're both, they both work in basically the same way. Um, the bugs don't develop an immunity to diatomaceous earth. They don't develop an immunity to um, uh, uh, Semexa, but they both dehydrate the bug in the same way. And that's why I use DE a lot because it's one of the things I get called out on a lot because I do a lot of videos. I ought to do a Semexa video just to, you know, talk about why I disagree with the use of Semexa and why I think it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's, the problem is, it's it's not necessarily that Semexa is not good. It's that it's not it's misused. It's not applied properly, um, and it's hard to explain to people who haven't. I mean, if you were standing here with me, I could show you. I could physically show you how to use a duster and how to do it right. But you can't. For those that are in the pest control field who have done this, you understand using a duster is there's a finesse to it. There's a certain way to do it to where it's safe. And it's, it's hard to explain it to people without actually showing them how to do it. But I could show you. <laughs> I could show you if you were here. How do you go about treating a vehicle for bed bugs or roaches? So I'm going to do a video on how to treat a, bed, uh, a vehicle for bed bugs. I, um, you, it's mainly just cracks and crevices like you always would, you know, for roaches uh, and bed bugs both. Um, so Molly says, just as encouragement, I use Crossfire, no need for dust, gone in one and a half applications, have not returned. Oh yeah, Molly's been here for a long time too. You, you always show up. Um, yes and yes, Stealth Woman, I beat a dead horse. Always. Always beat a dead horse. Aerosol Crossfire isn't very good. Um, because Liz Huntley says, uh, get the aerosol can. But the aerosol crossfire is not a very good um, product. The liquid, you want to get the liquid and mix it yourself. But um, I have had people that have said they've used aerosol and it works. But the problem with aerosols is they have, um, they have ingredients in them that will break down uh, over time. And so uh, they cause the chemical not to last as long. So I usually recommend that people not use aerosols. So... 
Oh, look, it's me. Me. That's a me from a long time ago. And Rory and, and Emma's way down there. Let me see. If I can pull this. I'll put this up here. There we go. There's Emma. She's almost eight years old. Mm. And no, Sebexa doesn't work any faster than Diatomaceous Earth. Liz asked. I try to say who talks because later when people watch this, they won't understand what I'm asked when I'm answering. So, so Liz Huntley also asked if Semexa works faster than DE, and it does not work any faster. It works about the same speed. Uh, Molly says bed bugs gone in two months for me using Crossfire. Uh, praise God, I got rid of them in my car. Uh, mud daubers. So mud dauber wasps. Um, what was it? Somebody had asked something about dirt daubers earlier. Let me see. You said it, Molly. How do you get rid of mud daubers? So mud daubers are something, they're pretty harmless. They won't hurt you. Um, it's very difficult to treat for mud daubers on a preventative because, so they fly around. So the way that you get rid of, and, and let me just zoom up like this. So the way that mud daubers, they, they fly around and they carry the mud in, in their I guess you could call it a beak, the, the mouth parts, and they splat it on the wall, and then they crawl over it, and they form those dirt dauber tubes. So even if you treat the area where the dirt daubers are coming and, and applying the mud, um, they're putting the mud on top of the uh, residual pesticide. Now, if you spray it directly on them, then you'll kill them, then they'll die. But... It's very difficult because a lot of times you'll uh, you'll find the dirt dauber tubes and you won't actually find dirt dauber wasps. So that's something that's hit or miss. You have to find where the actual wasp is and hit them on target with like a wasp and hornet spray or something like that. And that's what I recommend to kill dirt daubers. Uh, it's really one of those things where you kind of have to hunt them down and kill them. Uh, Jesus says, uh, Cortez, Jesus Cortez says, at my company, I was told to use gel bait stations and aerosol for roaches in a truck cab. Curious as to what you think about that. Yeah, that could work. That could work. Um, it depends on what bait you're using. Uh, Skynet Hell says, if someone used too much DE, what's the best way to clean it up safely? You can vacuum it up with a HEPA filter. That's usually what I recommend. That's what, that's what most recommend. Um, how about tempered? Okay, so I talked about tempered earlier. Uh, it's a, a pesticide, you know, that's uh, not very effective anymore. You have to apply it about once every two weeks. Um, razor blade says, when you mix Crossfire, does the water you use matter? No, it doesn't matter what kind of water you use, um, but it does. You do want to use a warm water when you mix, mainly because it, Crossfire is really thick. It's like a soup, and actually, um, it's like a really thick soup. And so I made a video on uh, how to mix. I'll put this back. I like it better down here with the title. Um, so if you go to my YouTube, um, I actually have a Green Acres. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, look, I'm live right there. So if you go here and you scroll down a little ways, it's, it's a really recent video. It's right here. How to mix Alpine WSG correctly. Crossfires for bed bugs. Alpine is general use. So if you click here. Oh, look, it's the same thing I put on all my videos now. But if you scroll in to like, it talks about treating for them. And it gives like the little chemical bottles there. So there's Alpine WSG and there's Crossfire. And you get in so far. And there's crossfire, and then there's treating. So, oh look, a commercial. Um, but thank you about my kids. They are adorable, aren't they? I like my kids. They're good kids. My son's great. He works with me. He's 16. He works with me. Oh, come on. The ads are insane in, in YouTube these days. All right, so there you go. So first you want to pour your water in. This is a BNG I'm mixing in. This might be actually Alpine. I think this is Alpine, isn't it? No, it's Crossfire. See, there's a Crossfire bottle. Boom, right there. And 
you pour it in. By the way, I should have put uh, uh, credits on this one because Rory was the cameraman. He was filming me do this one. And so you pour your crossfire. And the reason you want to fill your jug, your your application equipment, whether it's a B&G or whether it's just a gallon sprayer from Walmart, you always mix it half full of water because that's 13 ounces. You'd be surprised. If I filled this tank all the way full, then there's no way that that would mix. And this is warm water in this jug. I always package warm water when I go to, go to the job and when I do my work. So anyway, that's all you have to do. And you just put your tank right back in there screw it on and i don't know if i show it in this part but you always shake it up when you're done yeah and so then i'm here i'm mixing alpine but anyway you can go and you can watch these videos and see how i mix the different pesticides i recommend you watch them i recommend you you go to uh green acres pest control on youtube and you click this little button and then you go over here to subscribe and click the notification bell because uh yeah that's what you should do that's what everybody should do everybody should do that because i want to put it on this wall right here I want to have a little uh, silver emblem with the YouTube symbol because I have 100,000 subscribers. That's what I get for that. And I think it would be nice to know that I've helped 100,000 people kill bugs. Um, so it says that uh, Molly says WSG worked for me for roaches, um, which is amazing chemical. It is a dream come true for exterminators. Uh, Liz Huntley says, I haven't seen a bed bug or gotten bites in three months, but I feel like they're still here. And that'll do it That'll do it to you. It'll mess with your head after you've had bed bugs. It will cause you to think you have them, and even though you don't. Um, so Jesus says, we used MGK Vendetta. Vendetta's good. Vendetta's good. Um, with Advion bait stations. Yeah, so that probably worked, but you'd have to let me know how that worked if you were able to get rid of the roaches. But but Vendetta and Advion are both really good baits. They're both very, very good baits. Okay, so the problem is, so Liz Huntley says, I thought tempered FX last for six months. So the biggest issue with, th this, is, this is one of the problems that I have with um, pesticide labels. Just because a chemical says it lasts for six months, that means somewhere in a lab, a, uh, a a technician was able to find a residual of tempered. And it might kill some bugs, but it may not kill every bug that comes into contact with it. But it's still there. It's still a residual. It's still effective for some things, but it may not be effective for everything. So just because the label says it lasts for six months, take that with a grain of salt. There are people that say Crossfire lasts for a year, but I don't trust it to last a year. I still would apply it once a month, like the label says. Stealth Woman says, oh yes, I saw a product from Home Depot said you could put traps under bed. Uh, they look like little houses. I'm not sure what that is. Are you talking about for mice, or? I'm not sure, Stealth Woman. Um, Chaos Omen said, we used those traps, and all they caught were some ants and spiders. Uh, Molly says, how long is Alpine WSG good for? I believe it has a residual for 90 days. I'm not sure. But I still apply once a month because it's stronger and it works better on roaches because you need a strong chemical to kill roaches. Uh, MC Roxas says, I heard you can make your own little trap by putting some dry ice in a bowl upside down. Yeah, well, the thing is, that is not very effective, actually. They've proven that those aren't that effective. Uh, Stealth Woman says, do you buy tanks separate? Okay, so if you're going to use... I'm actually... Let me see here. Let's go to Walmart. Let's see what Walmart's got. Let me share my screen. Is it working? There it is. So let's go pesticide... Pesticide sprayer. All right. So let's say you get a pesticide sprayer from Walmart. This is what Walmart has to offer. Let's see if we can go to, I guess I can't really go to my store, but let's go to Deck to Hunt. This looks like a pretty nice one. Now this is only $16. So let's go look at this sprayer here. Now I'm gonna be very candid. So, you know, it's four star rated. Must be amazing, amazing. All right, so this is the problem. This is the problem with crap. 
this is the problem with buying crap is when you go to Walmart you already know I'm going to this store because I want to save money there's nothing wrong with saving money but you know right off the bat that you're not going to get quality from Walmart. No one goes to Walmart to buy quality products. If I bought a computer desk at Walmart, I wouldn't expect the computer desk to last more than a couple years because it's Walmart garbage. Okay, That's what you buy at Walmart. You buy garbage, and it might be okay garbage, but it's only going to be good for maybe a year or two, and then it's going to break. These sprayers... You're lucky to get, with something like Alpine or Crossfire, um, you're not going to get an awful lot of use. It's not going to be something you can use over and over and over and over again and have it be something that you are going to just love. It's going to kind of do the job, and you might be able to get rid of your bugs, and that's what I'd recommend for like a one-time do-it-yourselfer. Um, the reason that I recommend the G is because it'll last a lifetime. That's why I use it because it's going to last forever. But you should always buy your tank separate. Never, ever, ever use the same tank to mix Crossfire and any other pesticide. So let's say you had ants get in the house, and you're spraying your house for ants, and you got some store-bought pesticide, you mix it in one of these things, you go around, you kill, you kill your ants, your ants are gone. A year from now, you get bed bugs. And you're like, oh no, oh wait a minute, I've got that jug that I bought from last year. I can use that for my bed bug problem. Let me go buy some Crossfire and mix it in this jug that I used to kill ants last year. Wrong. Don't do that. The reason you don't do that is because pesticides don't mix well together. And you'll have residue in the old tank that will not mix well with Crossfire. And so, unless you triple rinse the tank, and the problem with plastics is plastics absorb a lot of things, and so you're better off just buying a whole new tank and mixing Crossfire separate, you're going to get a better application. So that's a tip, just a little tip, that if you're going to buy Crossfire and you're going to do a bed bug treatment, buy a separate tank. Now, when you're using something like a B&G, like one of these, like you see me sitting with right here, that's a stainless steel tank. So that's metal. So you can triple rinse that tank and then reuse it with a different pesticide. So that's what you do. You get rid of all the residue because it's stainless steel. You can clean it out and you can reuse it. And you're not going to have that problem like with one of these plastic tanks where they can absorb the pesticide residue better than, say, something like a stainless steel. So you really want, even if you get like a, you can get, Amazon has like, you know, off-brand stainless tanks. I would probably buy one of those because it's something you can reuse. You can put Roundup in it, spray Roundup in your garden or whatever, and then switch and use a pesticide. As long as you rinse it out really good and clean it out, you can use a pesticide in it later. So that's why you'll notice a lot of the guys that do pest control use stainless steel tanks because they can be cleaned. I just used Nyral Gloves uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus asked me what mill thickness. I think they're like six is what mill I use. Six to nine. Um, but I use reusable and throw them away. I don't ever use the same gloves twice. I, I go in, I use them. If they tear, I get a new pair. Um, I'm constantly, I go through gloves. And gloves are really expensive right now because of the what's been going on in the country. It's it, They are really expensive. They're about $20 a box. And I go through a box of gloves about every two or three days. So, uh, Molly says, how long is WSG good for if still in the bottle? If you've never mixed it, it it's going to be good for a long time. Um, Gary Carr says, Liz, I feel they're still here, but I haven't found any and it's been three months. Um, yep, Gary was here in the beginning. I remember when he had bed bugs. Liz Huntley says, the mental effects they give you is crazy. Molly says, a little birdie told me that. <laughs> um, Liz Huntley says, Gary, did you treat with Crossfire? Yeah, Gary treated with Crossfire. Uh, Chaos Omen says, I have been free of them for about three years and still feel like they're here. Stealth Woman said, no trap houses for bed bugs. Uh, no little trap houses for bed bugs. Okay, 
Yeah, I've heard of those. Um, you might catch a bed bug or two, but they just have to kind of wander in them. They're not going to be attracted to them. Um, Molly says, uh, they drive me crazy too. Hang in there. They are a distant nightmare now. Um, so. <sighs> yeah, so I, I, just so you know, I do answer questions as often as I can. So if you guys do, you know, send me any questions, just be patient with me because I get, I really do get to them. Um, I try to get to everybody's questions. I know that people ask things on YouTube and a lot of times they get overlooked. And uh, there was one lady that actually commented on one of my YouTube channel a while back that uh, it took me like three months before I finally answered her question. I felt horrible. Um, if the WSG is mixed, you know, I am not. Let's let's look and see because the label is usually where you'd find something like that. Uh, Molly asks, what if WSG is mixed and still in the bottle? How long is it good for? So let's see. Alpine WSG label. So let's see. Let's see if we can figure this out. Because I know that, that um, Crossfire actually says that it do, that you should really use it up and uh, not have it sit more than 24 hours. See, this is where I said triple rinse. It talks about triple rinsing containers. Um... Let's see. I don't think it says so, so I don't really know, honestly. I only ever mix enough to do the job. I don't ever over mix, so I don't ever have a lot of like pesticide left, left over. Um, in fact, if I mix a gallon in the morning, I usually have to mix another gallon within three or four stops. So... How long does Alpine WSG last? Huh. You know it doesn't say. If anybody could find out, if any technicians are in here that could find out, let me know. I don't like to uh, spend too much time just scrolling through a label. Because that's boring. No one wants to see that. But anybody want to see Bertha? I don't even know if these guys are even still alive. I bring them out every live stream to show them off. My pets. Is it going to show? There it is. Let's see. Come on. Focus. Focus. It's not called focus. But. Oh yeah, they're still alive. So he's right on the lid. He wants to eat. Can you see him? So this is actually a um He won't fall off of there. He is hanging on. I have not fed them yet, James. I'm waiting. I'm gonna feed them with you one day if I ever get the Yeah. The craziness in me to do it. Um, oh yeah, hey Seuss, I was just asking about how long does Dow Alpine WSG last once it's mixed. I honestly don't know because it doesn't say on the label how long to keep mixed pesticide. It may not go bad. The thing is, you have to constantly shake it up anyway to add, to keep it agitated. So I really don't know. And if it's in here, I don't know where it is. But I've never worried about it because I just mix a little bit at a time and use it up. So. Chaos Omen says, what is the likelihood of getting bed bugs from renting a house? Pretty likely. Um, Poonsmith says, it was a true blessing to find your channel. 
Thank you for all the great and honest information you provide. Thank you. I appreciate you. I'm glad that you uh, like my content. I hope I can help you. Uh, James said, have you fed them yet? Oh yeah, I answered that already. Molly says, revolution works well. I find fleas dead in the sink after I apply. You mentioned it earlier. I did. So three to five years, Alpine WSG insecticide will last three to five years when stored in a cool, dry place. Yes, I understand. So that's that's if it isn't mixed. But what Molly's wondering is how long would Alpine WSG last if it was mixed? So if you mix a gallon, say you use like 30 grams or 15 grams or 10 grams or whatever. And like, see, if you scroll up here for cockroaches, I actually recommend 30 grams. Um, but it says... There we go. Crickets, cockroaches, American, German, and millipedes. So this is for cockroaches, American and German. So American cockroaches and German cockroaches. It says you mix 10 to 30 grams per gallon. I recommend 30 in a clean-out type treatment. That's what you would use. It says make spot, crack, or crevice applications into hiding places and entry points such as crack and crevices, void areas, voiced areas, Openings around pipes and sinks under refrigerators, vending machines, entrescapes, across lower doorway frames, and window openings. So, yep. That's where you use it. Um, so, if mixed 24 hours. See, where do you find that, though? It usually will tell you that on the label. I never keep a chemical longer than 24 hours. I use it up. Use it up, use it up. <clears throat> oh, so I just got reminded. I'm supposed to give a nod tonight to a guy because I'm going to show a meme. Let me see if I can find the meme. All right, if I save this here and then open it up. I'm gonna share a joke with you guys I thought was funny. Well, I was I, I I told him that I would preview. There we go. Who here has bed bugs? Who here, who here has stink bugs? This is this man right here. He's like I th I got a chuckle. I thought it was funny. So the guy here is holding the box. This is the most impenetrable box ever created by mankind. What's that in there, he says. Ah, nothing could ever get inside this. Oh, my God. And it's a stink bug. There's a stink bug inside the box. Anyone who's ever had stink bugs before knows that they're penetrated into everything. Every little thing, you find them everywhere and everything. If you've ever had them, we are plagued by them here in this area of Virginia. And I was told that if I were to share that meme with my community, that I would have to say... So Michael James Burks says that, I said, I want to steal this so bad, I say. He says, you have to mention me in your next YouTube video. So I am mentioning him right now in my next YouTube video, which is tonight. He says that I have to say that my buddy, Michael Burks, known as God's gift to the pest control industry to everyone in East Tennessee... That's what I'm supposed to say. Then I can use it. So there you go. I've said it. I've stolen it. I'm going to put that meme on my Facebook page because I think it's hilarious. So there you go. Michael James Burke says a nod to you from me. Um, not sure how... Okay, so... Jesus says, not sure how accurate this is, but regarding WSG... 
While most insecticide concentrates need to be used within 24 hours of diluting, Alpine WSG solution can be used as much longer. As long as the solution was agitated enough to mix completely, then you can use a solution for 10 to 14 days after diluting it. So thank you very much. Yeah, but I agree, you know, you should always use up all your chemicals, triple rinse. The thing about leaving pesticides in a tank is you will get fungus, algae. Um, most pesticides are water-based, and so, you know, things that breed in water that aren't killed by pesticides, like, you know, plant matter, like I said, algae and, and different funguses and stuff will grow in the pesticide and that will tear down the pesticide too and so it is better to just use it up and 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 get you know use up just mix what you need and 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 get rid of it um and clean your tanks always clean your tank you know those b and g's that i show you know they last a lifetime not because i just you know mix stuff and never clean them it, they do require maintenance and you do have to clean them and take care of them but if you do they last forever just like a car. Molly says, thanks for your show and kindness. Your true blessing. Well, thank you, Molly. It's not a problem at all. I like what I do. I love you guys. You guys are great. Um, can you use Crossfire's preventative? Yes, you can. Chaos Omen asks if you can use it as a preventative. I typically use Alpine WSG as a preventative. Because it's more of a general use pesticide, you can use it for all kinds of bugs, not just not just cock, not just uh, bed bugs, and it's not as expensive, so you're not having to charge the customer more. But I do have some customers that ask for it specifically as a preventative pesticide, and I use it. But for the most for the most, uh, I usually just use Alpine for preventative. Uh, Jesus says, uh, "No, that was from earlier." Uh, Dora Bella says, "I'm so sorry, just got on, but I have a problem." Oh no. I have, I have the recliner, and it worked at first for bed bugs. Now we've used Crossfire four times now, and there's still some left. Is it bad for me to hack? Is it bad for me to ha bad for me? Okay, I'm not exactly sure. So, so you have bed bugs in your recliner. You've used Crossfire on the recliner, and it worked. But now the bed bugs are still there. You've used it four times in a row, and you still have bed bugs in the recliner. This is what I'm assuming you're asking by the question. Um, the, the thing that I have to ask you is how often are you using Crossfire and how long has it been total since your first treatment till now? Bed bugs can take up to six to 10 days to hatch from an egg, six to 10 days to bite after hatching. So that's three weeks and you get bit the first time from an egg. So even if it's only in like the second or the third week, a lot of times you'll still have residual eggs hatching and coming out and biting you. So that's just the way that bed bugs are. It does take several weeks to get them under control. Molly said earlier, who's leaving, good night, um, is that she actually, you know, had to deal with them for about a month and a half, two months before she was able to eliminate hers. So if you've been dealing with them for a little while, that can be normal with, with bed bugs. But she was able to eliminate her bed bug infestation with Crossfire. Um, James says recliners and couches are way harder to treat completely than beds in my expertise. Yeah, in my experience, yes, and you're right. Um, couches are very hard to treat. You have to flip them upside down, and you have to open them up. And the same with recliners. I actually find that recliners are probably easier to treat than couches, just because the weight, and they're easier to move around. Um, but couches are actually extremely hard, especially the way they're manufactured these days. So when I was a kid, you could take the cushions out of a couch. You know, you just pull them out and they had zippers in the back and you could open them up. You could take the foam out and everything and you could wash the sleeves and you could put them back on. But nowadays, the, the, the cushions are actually sewn into the couch so you can't actually remove them. And that makes it a lot more difficult to treat around all those cushions because the bed bugs, they don't just stay on the top of the cushion. They go down in the grooves, down inside and underneath the cushions. So... You need to be able to treat 
all around those areas and it can be very 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 difficult to get in and around to get all the cracks and crevices and seams where the bed bugs hide in a couch um, a lot of times couches are something that I usually recommend people throw away if they're heavily infested just because of how difficult they are to treat and bed bugs can live for such a long time without a blood meal um, if they're deep into the couch they may not even come out and get into the chemical right away and you may have a prolonged problem with getting rid of them so sometimes I do tell people to throw away their couches and stuff just because of how hard they are to, to get in there and treat it well um, but crossfire is not very harmful it's in fact I don't think it's harmful at all to mammals and that uh, we could look at the label pesticide PSTS label so let's pull up from mgk.com themselves this is the makers of crossfire so let's go so you can do this so a lot of people don't know this about pesticides but you can go to their website this is the manufacturer mgk manufactures crossfire and you can go and actually go down scroll down and see the actual label you can download the label you can download the SDS all these they've got it in both Spanish and English so you know if you speak Spanish you can get it Spanish so let's get the label and we'll see so I always tell people follow 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 the label always always follow the label never ever veer from the label always follow the label that's a good song someone ought to mix that that'd be great <laughs> but um, crossfire bed bug concentrate is a next generation insecticide which effectively kills bed bugs in both residential and commercial buildings and structures. Crossfire bed bug concentrates patented technology provides residual control for up to four weeks after application and is scientifically formulated to target pyrethroid resistant as well as susceptible bed bug strains. So it says crossfire bed bug concentrate is easy to use water dilute. Um, handheld or backpack sprayers it can be used with a paintbrush so this is another option for those that don't have a uh, a gallon sprayer you can apply it with a paintbrush uh, this product will not stain water safe fabrics or surfaces however care should be taken to test all inconspicuous areas for staining prior to use to kill bed bugs Adults, nymphs, and eggs. For best results, vacuuming surfaces is recommended prior to treatment. Spray bed bug eggs directly whenever possible. Apply as a pin stream coarse spray or low pressure spray for crack and crevice carpet perimeter and direct spray applications in and around food non-food areas where bed bugs and their eggs may hide or harbor. For example, on or around baseboards, floorboards, millwork, bed frames, headboards, wall hangings, Furniture, doors, and window frames, walls, closets, window treatments, beneath floor coverings, as well as non-washable items that may come into contact with bed bugs, such as luggage, shoes, and backpacks. If treating a pet's living environment, spray on and around pet beds, bedding, floors, sleeping areas, and furnishings. This product can be applied with a paintbrush to walls, baseboards, floorboards, behind wall hangings, and other similar areas. Crossfire bed bug concentrate can be directly applied to mattresses and box spring surfaces. For porous surfaces such as mattresses and carpet perimeter areas, apply until thoroughly damp but not wet, which means it should not run off the surface and drip. Infested bed bug linens should be treat should not be treated. So if your sheets have bed bugs in it, do not treat your sheets. These should be removed, tightly sealed in a plastic bag, laundered and dried at high temperature prior to reuse. Vacuuming surfaces prior to treatment is highly recommended. Using a pin stream, coarse low pressure equipment spray directly to mattress surface, paying special attention to seams, folds, tufts, edges. Okay, so you can use this on your recliner three, four, five times, six times, seven times, 18 times, doesn't matter. As long as you allow it to dry before re-entry, you are fine. You're not gonna hurt yourself. So if that answers your question, I hope that answers your question. I'm 
trying to get to everybody's comment. I'm sorry. Okay, so Jesus says, how do you keep bed bugs from getting into your home as a technician? My wife's sitting right here. That's why I looked at her. The last house that I treated was so heavily infested with bed bugs. I took my shoe off. I'll show you my slipper. I'm wearing slippers right now. But this is my slipper. This is one of my slippers. See? There were eggs all over the bottom of my slipper. All over it. There were... I, I was really worried that I had bed bugs on my clothes. When I got home, my wife made me strip all the way down to nothing but my underwear outside on the doorstep. She would not let me enter the house until I had all of my clothes off. I carefully folded them in on top of themselves. So I had this bundle of clothes that I walked straight in and put them right in the wash. That is what I do. I do not go to a customer's house if I have been into a heavy bed bug infested house because I do not want to track bed bugs into anyone excuse me into anyone else's home. So what I do is I take very I make very I'm very careful how I structure my route. So if I have bed bugs, I have to treat one day and I have other homes I need to go into. Like for example, maybe fleas or cockroaches or maybe ants or spiders or something like that. I do all of those jobs first and I schedule the bed bug job for last. That way I can do the bed bug job, go home and take a shower. If I do the, if for some reason I need to do the bed bug job first thing in the morning, I go to the bed bug job, I come back, I shower, I get ready to go out and do the rest of my work. I do not risk taking bed bugs into my customer's home. I will not do that. I will not bring bed bugs into my own home. It, well, I take that back. All right, so I do have bed bugs in my house right now. See, there's one. And um, if I can turn this right, there's one. And I think I got another one in the bottom here. He's hiding in there somewhere. I think he's in there. One. Two, three, yeah, three. Okay, yeah, I have three. But that's how I do it. I came home, and my wife made me strip all the way down to my underwear. And then she looks at me and says, all right, take them off too. And I, I looked at her and I said, hell no. I am not taking my underwear off outside for all the neighbors to see. I'm in my underwear. That's good enough. I don't have crabs. It's just bed bugs. So I walked in the house. I walked into the bathroom and took a shower. I did not infest my house with bed bugs. But that is how I keep from doing it. I'm very careful. I treat my car. I treat my I always treat my car preventatively just in case. You know, my car is always treated so that I don't accidentally bring bed bugs into the car. I do bed bugs all the time. It's it's like a third of my business is bed bugs. I do a lot of bed bug treatments. So I'm very careful. I've never brought any home except, like I said, intentionally. I did that on purpose. Can the bed bugs get immune to crossfire? People are claiming they can, but I haven't had any problem with them being immune to crossfire yet. Not once. Not at all. People say it. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. If they do ever become immune to crossfire, I'll be the first one to admit it. I absolutely will admit it. Why do you have to dispose of Crossfire for 24 hours? Okay, so it's not necessarily disposing of it. It just loses its effectiveness. It's not going to be as strong. If you if you expect Crossfire to last past the 24 hours, then it's, it's just not. It's it, They say it doesn't last as well, but you need to use it up in the first 24 hours. Chaos Omen says, Have you thought about using those shoe covers that surgeons wear? I do use shoe covers all the time. All the time. Um... But they've been, they were there at the beginning of last year. They were really hard to find. My wife ordered a whole bunch, so we have them. But I'm, I'm, you know, I don't use them everywhere, but I do use them. Can Crossfire be used as a preventative, like treat neighboring units? Yes, you can. I think I was asked that question earlier tonight. So, no one calls. I got this Skype number, so people can call me. 
You don't have to call with Skype. You can call with your regular phone. It's like, you know, where's my phone? Here's my phone. So if I wanted to call you, you know, I could call you. I could call me. And it will call. And I'll answer your phone. I'll answer the phone live on the air. So if you're shy and you don't want to type in chat or you have a question that would be easier to formulate with words rather than text, don't hesitate to call and I'll answer. I'm about ready to turn off live stream tonight anyway. I've been on here for over an hour and I usually try not to stream much longer than an hour because I have to think about the people that have to go back and watch this later and it's like an hour and 15 minutes and no one wants to sit through that. So, <laughs> uh, Would you advise having or quartering it? Small? Yes, absolutely. So Aurora asks if you would use less. So you can mix less Crossfire and I usually recommend if you're... The thing is... Let's see, is Amazon still up here? No. Let me go to Amazon.com. Okay, so this is my, and I'm going to post this again so people, because new people that have come in that, that weren't here, let me post this link. And this is in the description below too. You can find it later if you're watching this VOD later. But if you go to my, this is my Amazon page. So this is where I have listed, you know, all the things I use for my business. And these are things I actually use. So if you like go to Spider Control, I, I use Demon. There's Demon right there. Um, let's see, Carpenter Bees. Is that tempered? Yeah, that's tempered for Carpenter Bees. Dust. Uh, Delta dust and stuff for carpenter bees works really well. Um, and so these are the products that I recommend. And so, and I do have Sterifab listed too, but only for uh, things like mites. I don't use it for, it's not a pesticide, not really. It's mostly alcohol. But um, so I use it for things like, you know, to use to, to sterilize areas. So, like for, for bird mites, you can use it. It'll help the area, help clean the area really well. It's sanitizer, so antifungal, stuff like that. Um, so I usually recommend using that for something like bird mites, but not really so much for bed bugs. Um, Sterifab is used a lot of times in hospitals because it's very safe to use around people, so it's typically used in places like hospitals. Are the st is stink bugs gone? No way! I gotta fix that. See this. This is this is what I, this is why I can't stand out putting things up on Amazon because you go down through this list and you think, oh wow, stink bugs. Oh look, there's nothing there. That is, I'm gonna have to fix that. I'll I'll fix that. But see, this is why I have to I have to do this every week. I go on here every week and I show you guys my page so that I can keep up on what they've eliminated and what they haven't. But for like I was saying, I got off tangent and wasn't thinking. But if you go to Bed Bug Supply here and you go to crossfire now this is what i usually don't recommend for just anybody to buy because this is a gallon this is a whole gallon of crossfire you don't need a gallon it's 130 ounces which will mix 10 gallons it'll mix 10 gallons of crossfire but like you were saying earlier you asked if you can quarter it or half it so this graduation allows to be able to actually use less than 13 ounces so if you're gonna mix a uh a half gallon then do you you need to use six and a half ounces to a half a gallon they make half gallon sprayers but they're rare to find most people don't use half gallons most people just mix a gallon but if you mix half a gallon which so you 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 take your 13 ounces and you pour it in you mix uh, you mix a quarter gallon pour your 13 ounces in and equal a half a gallon and you try to get to a half gallon and that's what I would recommend or six I'm sorry six and a half ounces Six and a half ounces to a half gallon. Uh, you don't half, you half the recipe as if you were baking cookies. So if it's 13 ounces to a gallon, it's six and a half ounces to a half gallon. And that's the way you keep your, your uh, ratio correct. And so that's why I usually recommend one of these. And you can get a smaller, like a, like a squeeze um, one that actually has an ounce. So you can find these. Let's see if we can find these. Um, uh, pesticide half ounce um let's jug let's try jug and see if that comes up no not jug uh bottle mm. like see like one like this see this is an this is one whole ounce but they also have a half ounce mark right here and that makes it really easy to mix I'll see if I can find one and put it up on my 
uh, page when I go to fix my stupid stink bug thing that messed up on me. When treating cars, how many hours is it safe to get in the car once it's dry? If you use Crossfire, it says right on the label, when it's dry, it's safe to enter. As soon as it's dry, it's safe to enter. Thanks. Learning so much from your channel. Termite Inspector in California. Hey, cool, California. Um, or, uh, let's tell you a funny story. So, I don't, I don't even have 13,000 subs. It's not a lot. It really isn't. You know, most of these big YouTubers have millions of subscribers. I only have like, you know, twelve to 13,000. And I went out to, um, where was it? Alta Vista to do a termite treatment for uh, Eastern Subterranean Termites. I get out there and the guy is working on the house. He's doing contracting work. And he looks at me and he says, I know you. And I said, okay. That's cool. Uh, what did I do for you before? And he's like, nah, I don't think I know you from here. He's like, I'm from California. And I'm like, really? And he said, yeah. I watched one of your videos on bed bugs a couple years ago and uh, got rid of my bed bugs using your videos. And I'm like, no way. And he's like, yeah, back when I still lived in California. I was like, that's crazy. Small world. So yeah. <laughs> I meet him up in person here in Lynchburg. Well, not Lynchburg, but... Uh, Alta Vista. Here is a contractor. Small, small, small world. So, Aurora says, All right, thanks. I bought some a few days ago, and the directions say to use the whole thing, but I wanted a second opinion. Well, the directions, I mean, if you read the label of Crossfire, it says here that it's 13 fluid fluid ounces to a finished gallon. That equals a finished gallon. So it's 100, what is it? Well, how many ounces are in a gallon? I always forget this. How many ounces in a gallon? All right, so it's 128 ounces, almost 130 ounces. So if you've got 128 ounces and you minus 13, you know, it should equal 128 ounces with the 13 ounces added to it. You should have 128 ounces equal to a gallon. Um, so that's what it says to mix. It says 13 fluid ounces to a finished gallon. But if all you have is a half gallon sprayer, you put six and a half ounces in it to mix half of a gallon. That's the way it works. That's the same mix ratio that's how it works if that's all you have. So like if you have a three gallon backpack sprayer, then you would have to mix what? 39 ounces to the three gallon backpack sprayer. So you can mix it in a backpack sprayer and use it that way, but you could, no, they don't sell, uh, Stealth Woman asked if they sell Crossfire at Lowe's. They do not. You might be able to find it. I mean, Lowe's might carry it. So if you go to like Lowe's.com, and you search for Crossfire. Um, well, let's do Crossfire bed. Well, shoot, come on now. Come on, man. All right. Crossfire bed bugs. They don't have it. Nope. They don't have it. Not at all. Got itchy forehead. I've been wearing this hat all day. It makes my head itch. I need a haircut. Look at this. I show you my hair. I don't ever show my hair. I need a haircut. Oh, I need a haircut. Oh. I shave it down to like a with number three razor. Um. So. Anyway, you guys, I am going to have to get off of here. Um, yeah, see, they don't have it at all. People have been searching for Crossfire at Lowe's, though. They've been trying to find it, and they cannot find it. But it is a good, it's a good chemical. It's the best. It's the best thing for cockroaches. So, uh, not cockroaches, bed bugs. 
So if there are any other questions before I log off, I'm right at a, an hour and 26 minutes. I've been on here way too long, way longer than I should be. I uh, usually, like I said, try to keep these down to uh, just, a, you know, an hour. Make sure you don't have lice. Maybe spray some crossfire on it. Oh, come on now. Oh, I don't have lice. I'm telling you, when you wear a hat all day, every day, all the time, your hair itches. It gets to itching. But I do not have lice. It's great. Gotta love that exterminator humor. I'll tell you, show you. Let me show you what I did. Let me show you what I did. So I'm on TikTok. For those that don't know, I'm on TikTok. At Green Acres PC. This is my TikTok. So let me see if I can share this with you. Let's turn my, turn my desktop audio on. I hope I don't blast you guys' ear though. Oh, hey guys. Y'all have any bugs around here? Uh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, my friend here's got crabs. You got anything in there you can spray him with? So I made that. If you guys are on TikTok, y'all to follow me. Watch the crazy stuff I do. What do you use other than Crossfire as a pest control? So other than Cross, like for just general pest control, so... Uh, lots of stuff. I've got lots of chemicals at my disposal, you know. So the reason I recommend Crossfire is because people know me for bed bugs. Everybody always asks me about bed bugs. I don't know why. It's just what people ask me about. But if you scroll down on my uh, Amazon page, you can see. Uh, so this this is this is New York and Canada. This is what I recommend for Canada. That's not what I use. So, but if you go to Spider Control, I use Demon. There's Demon Max there. Granules. Uh, Weber's, I always recommend using a Weber or a Webster. I always recommend using those. Um, Carpenter bees, uh, Delta dust. Uh, I use, you know, te uh, not tempered, but um, let's see. I, there's, there's, uh, there's Taurus termites. Uh, Fleet control. We got Excitar. Got um, Alpine WSG. Uh, Nygard. The Alpine isn't listed anymore. I need to fix that. Um, but yeah, ant control, I use alpine, I got lots of, so lots of different things. I got lots of different pesticides that I use in my business. Am I not showing my TikTok screen? Did you not see my TikTok screen? I could have swore I showed my TikTok screen. There's my TikTok screen. But this is TikTok. So I give little tips, and this is this is a bed bug. This is actually a job I did just the other day. That's a lawn chair. So the guy was sleeping in a lawn chair because he couldn't sleep in his bed. And all of those white specks are bed bug eggs laid inside the mesh of the chair. That was really, really bad. But, um... It's... If you're worried that Crossfire is going to hurt you when you sleep in your recliner, um, as long as you follow the label and you obey the label, you shouldn't you shouldn't hurt yourself at all. Uh, Jesus says I've been asked by a tenant if I could spray inside their central air unit. No, can't do that. I'd say nope, can't do that. Uh, Will of Asher says, what if you accidentally get Gorilla Glue in your hair? Alicia. Yes, hon. So, I was going to, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this question to my wife. So, Will says, what if you accidentally get Gorilla Glue in your hair? <laughs> what if you accidentally get Gorilla Glue in your hair? 
What if you got? What if you on purpose get Gorilla Glue in your hair because you don't have hairspray? <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Because when you wear a wig, you glue it to your forehead. Yeah. Yeah. So I can understand. But you don't you use Gorilla Glue. glue. Would you use Gorilla Glue to glue a wig to your forehead? Some people do use standard glues to glue But them. Gorilla Glue is not a standard glue. Gorilla Glue is like a industrial glue. Right, but I have seen people on beauty videos use all kinds of glue. That's just crazy. That's just crazy. That's crazy. So, That's crazy. Or, or, People do crazy or things. Or they'll glue their eyebrows down and then apply makeup over it so they can draw their eyebrows. That's just crazy. I see it all the time. People do crazy stuff. Time. They do. That's crazy. So I can partially understand why, but I don't think Well, so if you're going to do... Like, okay, so I got these paper clips. I got one paper clip right here. So if you want to do a facelift, then you could do it the cheap way. And you get yourself some Gorilla Glue and just do like that. Okay, and, and, and like make it like a hook like this uh hook it in like that and then just hold it up like this and glue it to your face and look look at that <laughs> if i just had two of those i could just glue them right there and i would look like this all the time and i would be like i would oh look i already look so much younger <laughs> so that's just crazy people are crazy anyway sorry this is not about bugs we're not giving beauty tips on this channel Ah. Uh, Craig said, is Crossfire the only thing you use bed bugs as pest control? No, I don't. I use lots of stuff. Like I said, if you go to my Amazon page, everything is there. Everything's there. So let's see. Bed bug supplies. I've got Crossfire and I've got... Why isn't it listed? Well, it's not there anymore. I need to I need to go through and fix all my store, but um, if you're watching this later, go check my store. But I use Alpine WSG. There's one. There's a bottle of it right there. I use that. That works for bed bugs sometimes, but most of the time I use Crossfire. So Liz Huntley says Jason's so silly. <laughs> Excellent beauty tips says Tiffany Roberts. With the with the, that kind of hurt my cheek a little bit. I don't recommend using these these. Cause that actually did kind of hurt the inside of my cheek a little bit like I was trying to fish fishing for compliments so anyway but I'm gonna get on off of here and head on to bed uh, Adam I well I'll, Adam says had bed bugs in four bedrooms on the main floor did a crossfire followed up 14 days twice how long till I know if I've got them all I tell people give it 30 days after you get the last bed bug so if you if you haven't seen bed bugs for 30 days then you've more than likely eliminated your problem and with that I am going to close tonight. I will see you all next Thursday for live stream. I'm going to try to get a video up by Tuesday. I haven't edited one yet, but I'm going to try my best to get one up by Tuesday for you guys to watch. Y'all have a great night. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.